Well, hey guys, if you watch my channel, you know I like to review these inexpensive amplifier boards, kits, and complete amplifiers in a couple cases. Well, there are literally hundreds of different types of these boards out there. And so far, I've reviewed 10 of them, and I'm certainly going to keep reviewing more of them. But of these amplifier boards, I wanted to pick out the ones that I think are the best, and then I'll pick out the one that I think is the very best overall. Okay, let's look at each amplifier real quick. This one here is the Kenter MA170 with uh, separate bass and treble controls. There's the back of the unit. Next is the MA150. Has a volume control, USB port, and a high and low filter switch. And I have reviewed each amplifier, like I said, and you can find the review on my channel. And the ones that are the best, I will put a link in the description. Here is a TA2040. I did add this heat sink, by the way. This is a sure kit this one you have to solder together yourself it is a tpa 3122d chip that's being used there this is a pam 8610 kit it's the one that has its own power input jacks on it and a volume control. Next board, this is a TDA 7492. This board here is a TPA 3110. This is the PAM 8610 board that I reviewed recently. This is the PAM 8403 board that I reviewed a month or two ago. Very small. Last but not least is the LM 1875 board that comes as a kit. This one you have to solder together yourself. All right, let's take a look at which ones I think are the best. Okay, the best of the Kenter amplifiers I reviewed is the MA150. The main reason for that is you could use it with 4 ohm loads and get better output power. The problem with the MA170 they used a chip that can only handle 8 ohm loads if you run it at 12 volts. But this one has a proper chip that can handle 4 ohm loads and give you around 12 watts per channel. So that's why I gave this amplifier the win. The best of the Class D boards is this one right here, TDA 7492. And that is because it gives you decent output power. You can run it at higher voltages than the other ones I've tested for more power. Now they do kind of overrate these things. They rate them at like 10% distortion, but for actual clean power, this one delivered the most power of all of them. And I didn't notice any issues with distortion at low levels. 
It did have some background hiss, but it wasn't as severe as some of the other ones. But this one is the best of the Class D boards. The PAM8403 Very Tiny Board gets an honorable mention. Now, it's not a high-powered board or anything, but it does do the business running it at 5 volts. It'll give you about a watt and a half clean power into 4 ohm loads. And put my hand behind it so I can get a focus. There you go. This is a very good board if you don't need a lot of power. It's so tiny. Great to integrate into a small set of speakers. Okay, so which one, in my opinion, do I think is the very best out of all of them? Honors go to this little LM1875 board. Like I said, this is a kit that you have to solder together yourself. But one thing I liked it was the board layout was excellent. Looking at an engineering standpoint, how they laid out the grounds and the signal lines, you know, they provided a low-pass RF input filter as well. Things that I like to see are well done on this board. It'll get you probably a little more power than any of these other boards will do. Absolutely no issue with distortion or background hiss. These are excellent. And you can get them for 2 to $4.00. And like I said, I'm going to remeasure the power on these things because I do have the new power supply. Well, there you have it. These are the winners. The TDA7492, PAM8403 mini board, the complete Kenter MA150, and of course the top honors, the LM1875 board. That's it. Thanks for watching.